What breakfast cereal's made of? It's those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharp. Kids' cereals are sometimes called sugar cereals because unlike healthy choices such as oatmeal and shredded wheat, these kids' cereals are full of sugar. These cereals are probably better for you than Pop-Tarts, and at least you're getting important nutrients from the milk. Companies such as General Mills and Kellogg's market their products to kids with colorful boxes and fun characters. But let's be honest, a lot of grown-ups keep buying this cereal for themselves. So let's see if we can find the prize inside the top 10 kids' cereals we still love. I pity the poor fool, don't eat my cereal. <laughs> They're flakes, frosted flakes. Imitation frosted flakes featuring Terry the tag. Their food. Tony the Tiger is one of the great product mascots. Would it matter what he was selling? I guess there's something trustworthy about an apex predator wearing a handkerchief. Tony beat out mascot hopefuls Katie the Kangaroo, Elmo the Elephant, and Newt the New in 1951 to become the face of a new breakfast cereal from Kellogg's. Frosted Flakes, also known as Frosties, went on to become one of the company's most popular products. Tony's Flakes were second in sales in 2017, only losing out to Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios is a tasty cereal that could have made this list, and it even has a cool bee mascot. But getting back to Frosted Flakes, they're just corn flakes with a dusting of sugar, but the injection of sweet is exactly what that boring cereal needed to appeal to kids. Corn flakes are for adults, but Frosted Flakes are squarely aimed at kids. Several variations of the popular flakes have been released over the years, such as Birthday Confetti Frosted Flakes, Frosted Flakes Gold, sweetened with honey, and Chocolate Frosted Flakes. Kellogg's introduced Frosted Bran Flakes in 1991, describing them as lightly frosted bran. No one should confuse Frosted Flakes with health food, but it's still great. They're great! Bastard. If you're new to our channel, it would also be great if you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad. You have proved yourself worthy. Will you join me? The Nose Nose. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Toucan Sam can always smell out a bowl of Fruit Loops. He's known for crying out, Follow my nose! Fruit It's always nose! This kid's cereal, made mostly from whole grain corn flour, is known for its colorful rings that suggest the bright, tropical birds and flowers of a distant jungle where Sam might live. The colors of the blue toucan's beak, yellow, red, and orange, are the three original colors of Fruit Loops. Although the fruit-flavored breakfast cereal has been around since 1963, the additional colors, green, blue, and purple loops, were not added until the 1990s. Contrary to popular belief, the cereal has a generic fruity taste. There are no individual fruit flavors corresponding to the different colors. Kellogg's has produced several variations on the Fruit Loop theme, including a larger Snackums version and a snack bar that contains Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops was discontinued in the United Kingdom because of a lack of demand, but in 2017, a limited edition was release that contained unicorn shapes. Fruit Loop cereal has been a favorite in popular culture with references on several television programs including All in the Family, The Middle, and Two and a Half Men. The sweet, crunchy loops and rainbow colors are a kid's cereal we still love. I demolished a box of Fruit Loops fully nude. Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Rice Krispies. Rice Krispie treats? Way to phone it in, Sarah Wiggum. Kellogg's began selling the Toasted Rice Kids cereal under the brand name Rice Krispies in 1928. However, the three elf-like mascots did not appear together on boxes of Rice Krispies until a decade later. The mascots' names, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, are a nod to the sounds Rice Krispies make when you add milk to them. These kinds of words are known as onomatopoeias. The words suggest or imitate the sounds they describe. These characters were Kellogg's first mascots and are the longest-running piece of Kellogg's marketing efforts. This rice cereal was a popular choice, but it received new fame in 1939 when a Kellogg's employee named Mildred Day came up with a recipe for a treat made from Rice Krispies, marshmallows, and margarine. These tasty new snacks were dubbed Rice Krispie Treats, and they have been a hit with kids and adults ever since. Although for decades these treats were made from scratch at home, Kellogg's eventually started producing Rice Krispie Treats of their own in a variety of flavors. The tasty treats have arguably become more popular than the cereal we love. A quick online search will reveal dozens of Rice Krispie Treat recipes, including including a number of holiday-themed versions. And let's not forget the Rice Krispie Treats cereal. Rice Krispie Treats, anyone? Sugar Smacked, Honey Smacks. Well, not all kids make it, Lois.
Just ask the Sugar Smacks frog. People of a certain age may remember when Kellogg's Honey Smacks were called Sugar Smacks. However, the power that be at the food giant decided Honey Smacks sounds less like junk food than Sugar Smacks. So after about 30 years, the sugary puffed wheat cereal underwent the change in the 1980s. A 2008 study by the magazine Consumer Reports found that Honey Smacks is the Kellogg's cereal with the highest sugar content, more than 50% by weight. Apple Jacks is a close second at almost 50% percent by weight. This, of course, makes its original name, Sugar Smacks, completely appropriate. Diggum Frog is the mascot most of us associate with Honey Smacks, but there were at least five previous mascots, including the Hanna-Barbera cartoon horse, Quick Draw McGraw, who represented the cereal in the 1960s. Diggum took over as the mascot in 1972, but was replaced in 1986 by Wally the Bear to coincide with the change to the name Honey Smacks. Kids didn't warm up to Wally, however, and the following year, Diggum Frog reclaimed the Honey Smacks mantle once and for all. Kids love Diggum, and we continue to love this kid's cereal. Since when do you eat kid's cereal? I never drink milk. Count Chocula. Is it because you know I love Count Chocula? Do you? We are not sure why, but Count Chocula, introduced by General Mills in 1971, is the kid's cereal that some of us have remained the most attached to as adults. I suppose it's not too hard to figure out. It's a sugary, chocolate-flavored cereal with chocolate marshmallows, and it's hawked by a cartoon vampire named Count Alfred Chocula. What's not to like? Count Chocula is a part of a line of monster cereals that also includes Frankenberry and Booberry. Oh, Mr. Booberry, I'm your biggest fan! These three cereals were the most popular brands, but there were two additional monster cereals that are not as well known. Both Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy had short runs and were discontinued. However, they are revived occasionally for short runs around Halloween. For a number of years, we thought we imagined the Fruit Brute cereal as kids until the internet confirmed its existence for us. Alfred the Vampire is, of course, a takeoff on Bella Lugosi's vampire from the 1931 classic movie, Dracula. Frankenberry is reminiscent of Boris Karloff's character from Frankenstein, also released in 1931. The Count Chocula cereal was developed in the late 1960s, but the marketing campaign took a little longer. The Count idea emerged early, but General Mills took its time refining the idea, hoping the result would be able to compete with kids' favorites like Tony the Tiger and Captain Crunch. In recent years, Count Chocula and the other monster cereals have become coveted by hungry consumers around Halloween. I don't care what time of year it happens, happens to be. It's a kid's cereal that everyone still loves. But it's not Halloween. Grow up, Peter Pan. Count Chocula. Magically nutritious? Lucky Charms. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> this toasted oat cereal with the colorful marshmallows has been a kid's favorite since 1964. A General Mills product developer came up with the idea for Lucky Charms after experimenting with different combinations of cereals and candies. One of the concoctions that inspired the product developer was a mix of Cheerios and Marshmallow Circus Peanuts. Lucky Charms is the first cereal to include marshmallows, and it has spawned a number of kids' cereals that include colorful marshmallow shapes. The original Marshmallow Charm lineup was Pink Hearts, Yellow Moons, Orange Stars, and Green Clovers. Blue Diamonds were added in 1975, and over the years, a number of shapes were added and discontinued. These were not random changes, however. General Mills found through years of market research that changing the marshmallow shapes once in a while led to a noticeable increase in sales of the cereal. This revelation motivated the company to make regular changes to Lucky Charms. Everything from hourglass to unicorn shapes have been a part of the colorful Lucky Charms marshmallow mix. In keeping with the Lucky Charms theme, a leprechaun named Lucky was chosen as the mascot who was fond of saying, They're magically delicious. They are delicious, but even though they're made from oats, we know they're not at all nutritious. This hasn't eroded their popularity one bit. Lucky Charms remains a kid's favorite. Don't try and snort these Lucky Charms. Not just for kids. Tricks. I've been led to understand that tricks are exclusively for children. Trix cereal hit the supermarket shelves in 1954 as a sweetened version of General Mills' Kix cereal. This corn-based cereal originally used sphere shapes, but in 1992, they were changed to fruit shapes. They were switched back to their original sphere shapes in 2007. However, in 2018, General Mills felt it necessary to change back again to the fruit shapes. It's not yet clear when the company will decide to change back to the original sphere shapes again. Trix originally had three flavors and colors, orangey-orange, lemony-yellow, and raspberry. 
cherry red. Other flavors and colors were added over the years, including grapey purple and lime green. Trix, the Trix Rabbit, has been the cereal's mascot since 1959. He could be seen as a precursor to the Energizer Bunny because Trix exerted a lot of energy trying to get his paws on a bowl of tasty Trix. Trix is known for trying to trick kids into giving him a bowl of cereal, but he always manages to fail, and for his trouble, he is treated to the line, Silly Rabbit, Trix are for kids! Trix may be for kids, but it seems plenty of adults still love an occasional bowl of this fruity breakfast cereal. Silly Rabbit! Twix are for kids! You shall! One flew over the cuckoo. Cocoa Puffs. I'm Kaka for Cocoa Puffs. No, oh, damn it, take 26. I'm Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs has long been a popular marketing slogan for this chocolate flavored rice, corn, and oat cereal. Cocoa Puffs was introduced in 1958 by General Mills and is a variation of the popular Kicks and Tricks cereals. The company unveiled Sonny the Cuckoo Bird in 1962 along with his famous catchphrase. Even when we were kids, Sonny's antics seemed a little over the top. Yes, Cocoa Puffs are a tasty cereal, but he would work himself up into quite a frenzy for a single bite. For most of his career, Sonny was depicted wearing wearing a white and pink striped shirt. But in 2004, the character was redesigned and now he doesn't wear any clothes. We don't believe General Mills has provided an explanation for getting rid of the shirt. Cocoa Puffs are known for turning the milk in the bowl into tasty chocolate milk, and, mix your milk, with my cocoa puff. Milky, milky cocoa. and not surprisingly, this is a popular feature with a lot of kids. Chocolate is usually a safe bet when it comes to kids, and Cocoa Puffs is no exception. I think your morning Cocoa Puffs are turning you into into a hysterical woman. Milk and cookies. Cookie Crisp. Have some Cookie Crisp. You need something nutritional. You have to admire the makers of Cookie Crisp cereal. There's no pretending or hedging. They're called Cookie Crisp. They are little chocolate chip cookies. Isn't eating chocolate chip cookies for breakfast a fantasy for most kids? This must have been what the flavorists at Ralston Purina asked themselves when they decided to push ahead with a cookie cereal. The cereal debuted in 1977, but it was sold to its competitor, General Mills, in 1997. Cookie Jarvis, a wizard, was Cookie Crisp cereal's first mascot. Jarvis was depicted as a wizard and he used his magic wand to transform cereal bowls into cookie jars. Cookie Jarvis was replaced in 1985 by the Cookie Crook, who went around trying to swindle kids out of their precious bowls of cereal. A Cookie Cop was also introduced who tried to capture Cookie Crook, but he had only limited success. Several varieties of Cookie Crisp have been introduced over the years, including a Double Chocolate Cookie Crisp, Vanilla Wafer Cookie Crisp, Cookie Crisp Sprinkles, and Cookie Crisp Brownie. Parents could not have been very happy that General Mills was pushing a chocolate chip cookie cereal, but it's one of the kids' cereals we still love. Me and Jeff made it because it made you look more like the Cookie Crisp Wizard. <laughs> Sailing the Sea of Milk, Captain Crunch. How about some Captain Crunch? Captain Crunch is a sweetened corn and oat breakfast cereal created in 1963 by the Quaker Oats Company. A flavorist named Pamela Lowe was inspired by one of her grandma's recipes that featured brown sugar and butter served over rice. Wouldn't brown sugar and butter be good served over pretty much anything? Captain Crunch is one of the more beloved kids' cereal mascots and has quite a following with websites devoted to all things crunch. According to cereal legend, Horatio Magellan Crunch was born on Crunch Island somewhere in the Sea of Milk. He helms the good ship Guppy. The captain's charged with keeping the cereal safe from the likes of the pirate Jean Lafoot. There have been quite a few variations of Cap'n Crunch cereal over the years, including Cap'n Crunch's Crunch Berries, Peanut Butter Crunch, and Oops All Berries. Oops All Berries was introduced in 1997 and featured only the berry pieces and no crunchy pieces. This variation was discontinued after a year, but has made limited appearances since then. In 2006, a limited edition Cap'n Crunch was released as a tie-in to the movie Superman Returns. The blue Superman shield shapes turned the milk blue and were just one more reason why we still love these kids' cereals. Captain Crunch. Crunch berries. Okay, okay. What favorite cereal could you never give up? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to click on one of our other great videos. You can now become an official Babble Topper. Click on the join link in the description below to find out more.